Welcome to my troubleshooting guide in Premiere Pro CS5. I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to make the software run faster. You could also apply some of these tips to uh, previous versions of Premiere Pro. Um, and I'm going to get started here. First of all, I want to show you um, the kind of operating system I have. I have a, a 4 gigabytes of RAM and I'm using Windows 7 as 64-bit operating system. This is um, something that was needed actually, I mean for video editing with Premiere Pro CS5 as far as the operating system goes. Um, currently, uh, you can only use a 64-bit operating system with Premiere Pro CS5 and I think in the future, as far as future versions of Adobe Premiere Pro, um, you'll probably only be able to use this kind of operating system or even better as uh, it gets better. Um, but they're not going back in time with 32-bit and 64-bit. So if you have a previous version of Premiere Pro, you can use 32-bit. But for now, um, and for the future, uh, it's going to be 64-bit and higher for editing video with Adobe. Um, and I think it's a good move because it actually allows rendering to be quicker and allows the editing process to be a lot quicker. So those are two things to consider. If you don't have a computer that's 64-bit, you might want to uh, think about doing it. It really depends on how uh, serious you are about editing video, but it's a great thing to have. So with that being said, let's get to the project. Um, I'm going to create myself a new project. And the first thing that I have up here on the tab section, or second thing actually, is a scratch disk. Now, you can do this very simply if you come over here to, um, you know, if you're on Windows, or even if you're not on Windows, even if you're on a Mac, and you have one drive, the deal with partitioning the drive is allowing extra space to run away from the operating system. So I had 500 gigabytes with my operating system on the C drive, which is the common default drive for your computer. What I did was I partitioned away a drive over here and it's 134 gigs away from the operating system that can be my scratch disk and you can google partitioning a drive and it's very simple to do and what it will allow you to do is create a separate area uh, for your project and this is another trick to get your uh, project to run faster and to have rendering run faster as well so if I come over here my D drive is now my partition um, excuse me my scratch disk which I partitioned so I can leave that as, as is and if I come over here we have our parameters for our video, which is all good, and we click OK. The next thing we have here are the presets. Now the presets for Premiere Pro um, explain to you uh, in detailed information um, project settings. The greatest thing about this is that it, it can explain to you how you're shooting your video and if it's going to be compatible because what this should do, if you're serious about using Adobe Premiere Pro and your video is not working off your camcorder, take a look at these project settings and see if your camera is able to shoot in any of these modes. If it's not, then you have a problem because what that means is that you're shooting with a camera that's not compatible. And I'll show you a way that you can actually, you know, try to convert the uh, file in the future if you have a situation like that. Um, and when it comes down to, even though you, your camera might shoot, uh, say, like um, in AVI or um, Windows Media, what happens is, is there's a video codec behind the scenes that's compressing the file. And the video codec can actually, you know, if it's um, H.264, that would be a compatible codec now. Um, you can actually shoot um, in MP4 and you can import to CS5. Now with CS4 uh, Premiere Pro, you couldn't do that and you couldn't import um, uh, MP4 file. So that's something that's switched uh, with the new software from Adobe. So these are some things to think about before you, you start buying a camera and you want to edit video and stuff like that. Another thing we have here is your frame rate. Now the higher the frame rate the more RAM and memory it's going to take to edit the video and also it has to be compatible with the way you shot the video. So you need to find out the frame rate that you shot the actual video. If you lower the frame rate, if I lower it to 15 frames per second, my video editing will be a lot smoother. Now if I had 8 gigabytes of RAM I'm sure I could do a lot more and it wouldn't matter either way. But I know from my experience that lowering the frame rate in a project on my computer will allow the video editing process to be a lot quicker. When I send it for something online, it's the same kind of deal. Lowering the frame rate um, makes the file size lower and it also makes the editing process a lot quicker. So 
make sure that you know about the frame rate and also make sure you know about how your video shoots um, and what kind of frame rate it shoots. Once we do that, we're going to click OK. And I think that's pretty much about it as far as optimizing or if you're having trouble. Oh, one more thing. If your video is not working, which I have like a million people email me and saying, Jonathan, my video is not working and it's not importing properly or it's skipping in uh, Premiere Pro. If it's skipping in Premiere Pro, lower, like I said before, lower the frame rate. That's another way to uh, make it run smoother. But also, you can convert the file if you're not getting audio or it's just turning black or whatever it is. If you're able to play the video elsewhere, but in Premiere Pro where it's not working, you could convert the video and try to get to work that way. And that's like a last, you know, like the last uh, thing I can say to, to try to get to work. Um, we'll come over here and we'll go to um, the Adobe Media Encoder. Now, I'll give you a sample of a video where I can convert it. It's very easy to use the Adobe Media Encoder. I'm going to take a video, my intro here, and this is a Windows Media uh, file. And what I'll do is I'll just take the preset, come over here, and before it gets encoded, I can choose any format that's available here. I can also adjust the settings over here and this shows me my output information and shows me the frame rate and it shows me what the source was and that was an AVI so it was originally an AVI and what I did was I conver converted it to a Windows Media file and it's very simple to do so once we do that if we selected a file uh, format that we wanted you know I could do MP, uh, MPEG4 over here click OK all we'll have to do is uh, click Start Queue and it'll start rendering. Very simple to do. So that's about it. That was my troubleshooting guide in Premiere Pro. I hope you guys found it helpful, and I'll see you guys later.